Hey friends, greetings and blessings. Thank you so much for uh, joining us again. Um, hope that you guys had a great uh, time in your churches, uh, enjoying that beautiful uh, liturgy, uh, great um, confession, absolution, all those wonderful things that Christ has for us uh, every Sunday in the uh, service. If I'm not mistaken, this is the seventh week of Epiphany, uh, which is uh, an exciting, exciting time in the uh, calendar for us. And so, yeah, um, time with your families, uh, your wives, your husbands, and whatnot. I hope that everything's going fine with you guys. And so, I wanted to speak. Well, let me go back a little. Uh, last night, I had, I had, I had a video recorded. Um, kind of addressing some of the very unfortunate things that uh, James White, uh, the very popular uh, Reformed Baptist, um, you know, apologist, cultural commentator, more than anything as of late, um, and we'll get into that later in the video. And so I wanted to make a, you know, address that uh, situation that happened with him. Um, uh, I think it's a uh, two weeks ago or so where. Uh, flame, this very famous, uh, or oh, famous in most of the world. I, I didn't know. I'm not big on the hip hop, hip hop world or the rap world. Or, I, I'm not much. I, I love music, but uh, you know, having two young babies uh, and and a full time job doesn't allow the time to really um, invest in, in in what's going on in the culture and the music and whatnot. But he's um he's a very popular um, uh, hip hop artist. This is what I'm told. Um, evidently he was, uh, a, a former reformed music artist that as of late, well, not, not so recently because the man has done, uh, seminary studies in, in at Concordia, I believe is uh, Concordia here in Indiana. I'm in Kentucky, by the way. So that's like a neighbor state, uh, to us. And so, um, you know, very notoriously, uh, you know, most of the people in the reform world would know, and the Lutheran world as well, would know that he finished his degree. He's a, he's a MDiv, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a, a theologian in his own right. And he, he cranked out this video, or not this video, this music uh, c CD, where he is, you know, uh, he's pretty much dissing <laughs> or, or saying some things about Calvinism, which was his uh, previous... Um, a theological school, if you will. And he's saying some things there that uh, obviously Calvinists didn't appreciate. Uh, and then he had this uh, very um, famous um, uh, conversation slash interview with uh, Dr. Jonah Cooper. And uh, it was all uploaded in the video and there's a lot of comments and a lot of, a lot of commotion, uh, people left and right talking about it and whatnot. And so obviously, uh, James White had to insert himself in the conversation, made, made some unfortunate comments. And I decided to put away that video that I was referring to that I started doing last night. I was in the editing process and I, I realized that I had said some things that were not necessarily very accurate and I wanted to take it back and, and, and do a better job with that. But fortunately, um, last night I, I, t I tend to listen to a couple podcasts before I go to bed and, and a friend of mine, very dear friend of mine decided to, uh, uh, point me, he pointed me to a, um, um, uh, some videos that Jordan, uh, Dr. Cooper had recorded as far as a response to Stelman, who was, uh, he was a Presbyterian. He, well, n now we know that he has apostatized from the faith completely, but back in those days, he, he left the reformed, um, his reformed duties as a pastor. He, he renounced all of that and he became a Roman Catholic. And so in listening to this podcast and going through the Facebook uh, group discussion, uh, group that we, that, uh, Dr. Cooper has on, on his page, I came across this interesting video, which is, uh, it was called the young, uh, why are the young and restless Calvinists, uh, leaving that, uh, culture. And so I listened to it and I thought, it was, I thought it was just great. And uh, the thing that caught my attention the most was in the latter part of the, <clears throat> of the video, he, he was talking about, you know, first he, he mentioned that, you know, um, Calvinism is a great segue for people that are coming out of a more evangelical kind of soft 
uh, the, the soft kind of mystical side of, of, of Christianity uh, and that a lot of people appreciate the fact that um, it, it answers a lot of the questions that you could have a, as a young man. Um, you know, you, you can fight for. There's a lot of logic and reasoning uh, behind that. A lot of, you know, as I said before, answers to questions that most of us had, including myself back in those days, although I'm not from this country, so I was a little limited in that aspect. And so in that sense, it was very attractive. But at the, at the, um, the last point that he made was that many are leaving the, the let's say, the Calvinist Reformed Baptist world. The, I call them the Tulipians, if you will, um, and going to a more um, confessional and more uh, reformed uh, side of Christianity. Uh, because, and, and, and Dr. Cooper said very appropriately, because as you start to age and you start to get off of these, um, you know, stage cage and, and the anger and this, this desire to fight uh, as a young man, you start seeing that not everything is black and white, that not every, especially in Christianity, not everything can be explained, not everything uh, makes uh, necessarily a lot of uh, sense. Although, of course, we, we, are, we need to use our, you know, our common sense, our, our brains, but there are certain things in Christianity that you simply cannot put two and two together. It's simply, that's simply the way it is. And, and um, he also noted that, so th there's like two, there's like two currents, if you will. One is going towards, so uh, one, so you have the Calvinists as a whole. One section of that movement is moving, moving towards the, um, as I said before, the confessional, the more reform side. And the other side is pretty much stuck into um, the culture. You know, all they do is address culture. Uh, I, I even saw a video, uh, you know, these guys at Cross Politics and, and Doug Wilson, the theonomists, which include guys like Jeff Durbin and all that, those guys, um, you know, the abortion rallies and, and um, addressing uh, taxation and the economy and uh, sexism. Um, even now, a guy that's, out, that's coming out of the um, Jeff Durbin's uh, ministry, I forget his, uh, uh, Pittman, uh, Marcus Pittman. Uh, you know, all they do is obsess over cultural things, uh, economical things, uh, 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 things uh, regarding, uh, you know, whenever Trump addresses the, uh, you know, the, the country with anything, they jump on it. That's, that's pretty much all they talk about. And I, I really appreciated that commentary because it, it kind of, kind of explains um, why they act the way they do, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, their theology uh, it, it's just uh, it's dry. It, it's it's um it's it's Christless, if you will. Um, they they obviously don't have the same sacraments that we have as as Lutherans. They would deny that Christ is present there, you know, in the bread and the wine, as he promised that he would. And so, in that sense, we do understand uh, why they act uh, the way that they do. Why they are not so much uh, into uh, theological conversations, if you will. And, and this is something Dr. Cooper explained at the beginning of the movement, it was all about discussing the tulip, you know, total depravity and election and whatnot. But as time moved on, they move on from that. There's nothing more to argue. They, they, the fight is gone. And so they move into cultural things because, as I said before, it, it, it comes to a point where, like, what is the point? There's, there's nothing there, really. There's no substance there, really. Um, it, it, it's, it's Christless. That's, that's just the way it is. It's, they, they, they don't go into uh, their confessions. They don't really catechize people. Uh, their emphasis is not on Christ, per se. And even if you, if you read uh, more, let's say, the hardcore theonomists, uh, they are really more, they, they'll, they'll even come out, and I read an article, and I I think I posted it in the last video I recorded. They're more into, they, they'll go as far as to say, you know what, do you have to make preaching politics and economics a priority in your church? This is what you are commanded to do as a pastor. And uh, it, it doesn't have to be in the second service. It, 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 has to, it has to have a place of priority and preponderance. It's, as I, I, was just, I just chuckled to myself. These, these people, and they, they'll, say, they'll say even, uh, you know, salvation is a work of God. Don't worry about that. He, he, he'll find a way to do it. And, I, and then he said, if you have to preach the gospel, uh, you know, X amount of times in the year to a someone in the church, uh, they're not Christians. They, they, you need to move on and go to bigger things. Uh, those are the smaller things of Christian. And I just, I was just looking at it. It's just, it's just, it's just an amazing. And so uh, full disclosure here, um, as I said before, I think I said it in the, in the beginning of the video, I used to be um, a big, 
a big fan of uh, James White. I really, so I need to give you some context because I'm not American. So you need to understand the country where I'm from is 85% a um, Roman Catholics. Um, uh, the other percentage, which you know, 15%, will be more divided into different denominations. Like you have Jehovah Witnesses in my country, which is a small section. You have the Adventists. But then obviously the bigger groups would be, I would say with good reasons, it would be the Baptists. Now there's a very small movement of Reformed Baptists slash Presbyterians in this one church that I used to attend when I was a young man over there, uh, obviously many years ago. And um, and then you have obviously the Pentecostals. They just run the they they just they're the majority, uh, of course, because you know the, all the emotional emotionalism and the mysticism. It seems to grab people's imaginations very well. And of course, you, you go into a poor country like my own and you start preaching prosperity. You're gonna you're gonna grab a lot of attention. So so James White in that sense was very helpful because. It was um. It gave you a very logical, a very um, um, you know, a strong um, arguments against all of the nonsense that was going around. And I remember back in this time, I also became a big fan of of Mark Driscoll because he made he made Christianity uh, and Calvinism. He made it cool, and the the way that he appealed to young men, it was you know, get a wife, act like a man, these kind of things, uh, especially in the culture where. It's pretty much feminized. Uh, you, you you can appreciate that a lot, and so uh, it, as I was explaining many of uh, you know the the mini series that I did for uh, the Wittenberg project, um, I think I did uh, so far. I've done three videos explaining my background and so forth. Um, so this is the, how I started. I started, you know, I started as a Baptist. This is where my parents took me to, and then I spent the majority of my life, let's say, uh, 20, 25 years, being a a Calvinist, but Reformed Baptist by default because I just didn't know any better. There is no such thing in my country as an evangelical or a, a, a Baptist explaining or defending infant baptism. That just simply doesn't exist. That's considered to be, in my country again, a thing that Roman Catholics do. So it, it's simply not even discussed. That's, that's, that's just a big no-no. And so 20 years in that movement, then I come to this country and I remember a friend challenging me and saying, um, you know, if, if you cannot be a reformed person if you don't believe in infant baptism. And this got my my wheels spinning and I did my research and whatnot. <clears throat> but and then by that time, I was already getting disenchanted with um, with James White because of the, 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 the racial uh, issues that he got into. And for, to be perfectly frank with you, he has no business really getting into. He's very um, just just ignorant, uh, unbalanced, uh, unfair, and frankly, he has. This is my opinion, and you know, take it for what it's worth. He has kind of devolved into, you know, uh, just like an all like an old angry, bitter guy just complaining about culture and the things that he sees around as the world is changing around us and just you know, kind of lost hope, just just critiquing. It's almost like, <coughs> no disrespect here, but it's almost like when I go and, and, and hang out with my father-in-law and he's just, <laughs> you know, talking trash about the culture and things were not like this before and you know, get off my lawn kind of attitude. And so it's like, okay, there is no, no, no there's no value there anymore. But as I said, the, the black, um, um, race issue that got me kind of disenchanted and i said you know it, it, it's enough of you buddy uh I, you know we, i have to let you go was i remember um how he really got upset with um um w whenever someone would say on twitter which i'm not on twitter anymore um anyone that mentioned you know the black church because he's big into the crt movement and and um all these black uh, black people, black you know, African American, in this country that want to take over churches and uh, you know restitution and all this stuff, um, and and he would really really get upset when someone said the black church because you know, and I agree with with him in a sense. There's no such the church is a church, and the church is com, com, uh, comprised of different ethnicities and what's not. But so that's something that shouldn't be even a conversation, even though we do acknowledge that there. Are, different ethnicities and every ethnicity and there's different cultures and and you have to be you, you need to understand that 
not every culture is going to see eye to eye on very different things. And that's just the way it is. And so, and so okay, okay, I took that. So he, I remember hearing him after he said, you know, after this tirade and, and he arguing about the black church not being really a thing in our, that it shouldn't be a thing in our midst. He, he's saying that, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know where this came from, but he said that black churches are the most theologically ignorant and um, like, the, the, like they have no desire to grow in their knowledge of theology and textual criticism and whatnot. And I said, wait a second, how is it that if you believe that we shouldn't divide the church into these different ethnicities, why are you now picking on the black church? And why do you assume that, why, why don't you use that standard as well with many other churches that are predominantly of one ethnicity? Like, I've been into, so I speak Spanish, and I've been to majority Mexican churches in this country, and they're not the most theologically savvy and uh, and sound. Um, they're not big into textual criticism and things like this. And would you also go out and say that, you know, the Mexican church is deficient in this sense? Or also, I've been into, you know, majority white churches in this country, and, you know, I didn't have any problem with that. I mean, I was just, I was new here. I was kind of lost trying to find my way, get a good job and walking into these churches and it was majority white. I would say 90, 95%. And the theology was completely off. It's just, and so I, I started wondering, why do you pick on blacks and not on other ethnicities? And, and then I also, uh, the last one that did it for me, I, I think this is a couple of years ago, when he went into saying that, you know, it, it, the majority of black women are, sort of promiscuous and uh, prone to aborting their babies. And I just, it just I just kind of lost my mind because I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, you, you can twist numbers to say whatever you want to say at the end of the day. Um, but how does that help you in, in arguing or talking to an individual? So first of all, you violated your own logic, your own reason. And, 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 and if you know anything about James White, here's the thing. He is big into calling others out for misrepresentation and straw man. And, and uh, you need to get off of Wikipedia and you need to do re uh, real research and you need to buy books and, and this kind of thing. So no, he, he's a self-proclaimed scholar who, who, who is big into fairness and balance and, and all these things. And it's kind of rubbed me the wrong way that he did this with, with black people with black people and this is also a segue into what's coming later and as, as far as the way that he dealt with um with uh with flame and so starting with those things i just i i i i, I seriously just got disconnected I, I i thought he was becoming a weird person i just simply believe that it's time for people to stop stop using the church stop using christ as a stepping stone into things that are completely unrelated to christ like if you really are about Christ, and this is the, one of the biggest discussions that we have as Lutherans, why why is it that uh, people like you know Calvinists and 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 um, Pentecostals and Charismatics, why why is it that main, mainstream culture calls them evangelicals when they are almost a, nothing about, about everything except the gospel? It's about filling your pockets with money. It's about you using your reason and your logic. It's about uh, talking about taxation and, and racism and sexism and, and all kinds of political stuff and America first and, and theonomy and, and the law. Why do you call them evangelicals? Like we are the real evangelicals. So, uh, so here's my criticism or my, my concern, if you will, or my comments on the thing that happened with... Um, um, that, that, that I observe with uh, Dr. White is the following. I've been a Lutheran officially, and I say officially because I had been studying previous, previously to, to, to June, which is where, where, I, where I tell my friends that I became a Lutheran because it was a time where I had the opportunity to visit, uh, you know, go to issues, etc. at the conference, um, and I was just blown away uh, by the, you know, the liturgy, and I thought it was a beautiful experience. I'll never forget it. But I had months previous studying that and i'll give you a list of the different ministries that um that um have 
impacted my life and really helped me in my understanding. So I remember the, the first big one was obviously Issues Etc., which is a radio station. If you're a Lutheran, you know this. Um, if, you find, if you want to find about anything, about anything, really, um, you talk, uh, you know, baptism, Lord's Supper, uh, the history of Lutheranism. They have great guests like, of course, the Dr. Jo uh, Jordan Cooper, um, guys like uh, Fisk and uh, Wolf Mueller and whatnot. So that's a great that's just a great base. Like if you, if you just want to go somewhere that you that where you'll find um, uh, information about anything, that's the first place I would recommend you to go. And then you have um, so Jordan Cooper as well was great, uh, very helpful, especially because he has a, a background with Calvinism, so he understands where we're coming from. Um, we, uh, I also have friends with fifteen seventeen; they have helped me a lot. Brian Wolf Mueller has a great. Uh, podcast himself. I also uh, Rev Fisk, Reverend um, jo jo um, jo Jonathan Fisk. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm I'm part of his uh, video editing team and helping to promote his book and putting out videos and his newsletter and stuff like that. I'm part of that team. So <clears throat> by the by the grace of God, I'm I've, I've become pretty involved with this. And I, I, of course, I also have my little YouTube channel with my friend Lex, uh, Wittenberg Project. If you want to support, we we, we would really appreciate appreciate that. And so. I did my calculation and I have a little over, since June, I have a little over 1,500 hours of, you know, audio, uh, you know, listening to, you know, audiobooks, podcasts of d different kinds, also reading books and different materials, interviews with pastors just in my, in my area. Um, it is not necessarily the most Lutheran friendly, if you will, uh, but I've visited four churches. I've had the, in, the opportunity to interview different pastors, ask them different things. Uh, they have given me books to read. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to do private confession and absolution and uh, many, many other things. And here's the thing. I don't understand how you can make a video critiquing um, Lutheranism in, in a very dismissive manner, which has kind of become a brand thing for, for uh, James White. That's just the way he acts. I'm sorry, he, he comes across as a jerk. I, I don't know him in person, but, you know, if you watch his videos, he's, he's very tends to be very dismissive. Um, the way that he addresses, addresses other pastors, even on Facebook and Twitter, treats them, like, frankly, like idiots. Um, like they don't know what they're talking about. He's just very, he's just, he's just like that. It's just, it's just the way that, that it is. And I was wondering as, as I was listening to his little video attacking um, or putting uh, flame on in his place, <laughs> um, he never mentioned the book of Concord. And he almost assumed, based on his experience on talking with different like Lutherans that you can tell right off the bat that they don't really know what they're talking about and tend to be on the liberal side. I don't know why you would take that and act as if that is representative of Lutheranism. Like, don't you know that there's a conservative side that has over 2.5 million people? How is it that you never mentioned the Book of Concord and uh, lame men with, with less than a year of, be, of, of studying theology, Lutheran theology, how come would I know this? It's even in Wikipedia. For Like, the Book of Concord is the book that you want to go to if you want to know anything about conservative uh, Lutheranism. And so I thought that was interesting. But again, and this is something that bothered, bothered me, and I guess it shouldn't, but I've seen him address Mormons and address Muslims with more respect than that. Because like, as I said before, he's big into fairness, okay? And, and I agree, we, you know, I, you don't have to be a Christian for me to treat you right. We, we, we have to show, as the book of Romans says, oh, nothing but love to everyone. This, uh, I think it's Romans uh, 11. And so I agree, we have to treat everybody with respect and dignity. And so he goes a mile and beyond into preparing and reading and bringing in, you know, Muslims to talk to him about different things, scholars, Muslim scholars. He even brought a, a language expert, I believe, back in the day to really be informed of what's going on. He travels all the way to South Africa and debate these people. The same with Mormons. He's very f famous for the work that he has done uh, with Mormons down in Arizona. 
But when it comes to talk about Lutherans, you dismiss us as people that just believe in mystery. <laughs> it, it, it equates us with the most liberal wings of Lutheranism. It's like, what's going on? Like, you just... Uh, <laughs> then, and then in answering uh, the, 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 you know, the tweet that uh, Flame put out as far as some, he made a tweet and you can watch the video. I'm going to link it down in the, in the, uh, in the video. He says something about, um, you know, if Adam, something about Adam and Christ and the extent of the sin uh, and the plague of Adam and, 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 and the extent of Christ in his salvation, which is obviously had to do with justification, you know, objective, subjective justification. If you're Lutheran, if, you, if you've been a Lutheran for a while, you know what I'm talking about. This is, I don't want to say everywhere, but you'll come across that eventually. And, and his answer was, well, I guess it shouldn't shock us. Instead of addressing the biblical arguments that Flameward was making, which I think had, were valid points, and you can have a decent, very nice, very deep conversation about these topics, he right away goes into logic. Well, if you're saying this, then it means that it, 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 you will descend or you'll become a universalist. But wait a second, that's not the way that we do theology. The way that we do theology is we read the scriptures and if God says so, it is so. And that is the end of the conversation. And if in, by, if, if in the process of you reading the scripture or teaching scripture or whatever you're doing with the Bible, if it trumps or if it confronts or if it puts your whatever theological system you belong to, if it puts it in check, then you need to do, then you need to repent and you need to change your positions your uh, system of theology. You don't change the scripture. You don't go to logic. But of course, if, if, you're, a real, if you're a Calvinist, what else can you do? I mean, Calvinism was really built upon reason and logic. They, you know, my body, this is my body. It doesn't mean this is my body. I mean, uh, how, can the, how can the finite uh, 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 con uh, contain the infinite? It's pure logic. It, by the way, if you believe that, obviously you have a lot of incarnational problems because God came into an, a finite body. I mean, it is what it is. And so I guess at the end of the day, I, I suppose that the conclusion of this is, you know, you know, I guess it is what it is. Um, if you're not really into Christ, if you're not really into a, um, you know, those kind of things, I guess that is your place. I think you will love that, having those type of conversations, which are not really Christian conversations. As I said before, it's just a, using Christ as a stepping stone to do a kind of nationalist work or stuff like that and vent your anger against culture. But, you know, thank God that, that a lot of us are just walking off of that because, as I said before, I mean, the world just dries. It, it, there's, where Christ is not, if, if Christ is not there in our midst, we'll just dry up. Christians are not going to, you, you can't, you can't sustain a ministry. You can't, you can't be a happy, joyful, you know, Christ-centered individual in those kind of theological systems. And this is the reason why I appreciated um, his system. So uh, in this video that uh, Dr. Cooper put out in the, uh, a couple of days ago and that I had the opportunity to watch because it resonated so deeply with me. I remember when I exited Twitter, uh, when I was on Twitter, so I, I was on Twitter from 2016 until last year, and I remember when I finally got out, how dry I, I, I was, how, how I felt defeated. It, it was like pointless. What is, what is the point of this? And, you know, my tweets, what, my, my feed was surrounded and, and, and drowned in, in, in Calvinism and, and, um, and uh, cultural things and the black thing and the CRT thing. And, and the end of the day, you used to just like, what, what is this? And, 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 and looking back in hindsight, hindsight, this even affected my, my marriage. Uh, it affected my spirituality. Um, I was just, I was angry and bitter all the time. And, 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 and it's hopeless and hopeless. I, I, I had, I didn't have any joy really. Uh, and, and, um, as, as you, and the most important thing is I ended up with a lot of, as I started looking into Lutheranism, and watching debates and the back and forth, you have to be honest with yourself and just say, you know what, you have to leave a certain degree of 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 um, of space 
for for mystery and paradox. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if someone said it, that the day that you can fully understand God and put him in the little box, and I don't say that in the sense of the what the evangelicals would say, because they'll just, they'll just go nuts with that. But I'm saying in the most positive, most conservative, confessional sense that you can, you have to understand that Christ has done and continues to do in the bread and the wine, a lot of mysterious things. It is what it is. And and thank God that a lot of people are just running away from this system. Because at the end of the day, you'll just, you'll just end up being a bitter person. You walk away from Christ. Some of some people have just walked away from Christ. They have beca- they have become just embittered people with any, anything that has to do with culture. And it, it just destroys you. It really does. It's a, it's a soulless system. And so I just wanted to make a comment on that um, and um, just um, and just point out that, you know, I want to encourage you. Some of you are considering Lutheranism and moving out of Calvinism, moving out of the Reformed Baptist thing. I do understand that not all, you know, Presbyterians are a different animal. They're not. Some of them are more confessional, more into Christological things and liturgical and whatnot. So I'm not addressing you guys, but <clears throat> I thank God that you know. It seems to me that this movement is dying. Um, it, it is a great, it's a great segue if you're coming out of a uh, a movement where it's just mystical and 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 lost, and it'll give you great apologetics and a backbone. But at the end of the day, it becomes a Christless, uh, kind of pointless system that it doesn't do us really any good. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.